right, do you want to start? Do you want me to start? We are the Road to Tarbalan, and we are going to be covering the first of the many bonus episodes that Amazon has so graciously given us. The first one deals with the breaking of the world, and if you haven't read the books, it's kind of like, what? what? The heck? Yeah. yeah. These little clips are only about three minutes long. Mm -hmm. There's a nice chunk of information here, but we're just going to expand a little bit on it. But for the most part, this will be for new viewers, not book readers. Yeah. And real quick before we jump into a summary of the clip of the, the breaking of the world, mm -hmm. just kudos to Amazon Prime for creating these things in the first place. This is a major investment on their part to make sure that the audience can grasp as much as possible what's mm -hmm. happening because let's face it the stories like the the books it's a massive series like you can't suggest this to someone without going and it's 14 books long so i think that this was a really good addition and just thoughtful so summary Summary. Summary. So this is, again, the breaking of the world. And it starts out with a quote from the prophecies of the dragon, which is something that shows up in various formations throughout the books. Did you want me to read the quote? You don't have to. Yeah, I don't really, I don't want to because I have one that I want to read later on that I think is better than this quote but then like the next scene opens up it's a aerial view of what i believe is the interior of tarvalon so we have this group of novices following an Aes Sedai into a classroom setting and i believe this is actually the library of tarvalon that we're getting to see and this course where novices are being taught and the brown Aes Sedai is there explaining to the novices that for 3,000 years, sisters have been trying to understand the breaking of the world, which cannot be talked about without talking about the imprisonment of the Dark One. And so she explains, Luce Theron, the forces of light, they go and imprison the Dark One. But before they are able to successfully do so, successfully, question mark, do so, the Dark One has, I believe she says, like one defiant strike against the forces of light and poisons the male half of the One Power, Sidene. So you go from like the classroom setting to like this shadowy image of the Dark One, then to... The image of Luz Theron, I'm assuming it's Luz Theron. I feel like that's a pretty safe assumption. Um, it's a man standing in front of a dragon banner. So That dragon banner, that <laughs> long, rippling white with the crimson and gold was so beautiful. And it was so much grander than I think of as banners when I think of something like that. He's walking through kind of basically stumbling his cape drags across the face of his dead wife and he has no idea one that she's dead two that he's responsible for it um it also mentions that he has killed everyone in his family his court There's his children yeah his children he has murdered everyone the poisoning of sidine is driving male channelers mad and Luz Theron is the first one that gets discussed, and his madness, of course, is quite extreme in its results, but not particularly unusual for what happens as the breaking of the world continues. Luz Theron pulls his sword from the body of his wife, the corpse of his wife, I like that better, and the Dark One comes in and momentarily released him from the madness He released him from the madness so he could see what he was doing. I am failing hard today. <laughs> that took a very long time for a minute and 15 seconds worth of it. But I feel so dumb right now. I'm so sorry. Okay. I even wrote things out like really nicely and I didn't even read it. It's cool. Please take over. Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> 
So we've got this classroom setting, mm-hmm. and we have what Tracy pointed out is most likely a member of the Brown Aja teaching these novices in white, these young women, about the breaking of the world. She continues on to explain that none of the male Aes Sedai were spared. If you're new and you're watching this and you hear male Aes Sedai and think, wait, what? Yes, this was totally a thing. There were male Aes Sedai before the breaking of the world. It goes on to explain that this time of madness is essentially the beginning of what the series will be calling the breaking of the world. Mm -hmm. It is the time of madness. It is Mm -hmm. a time of unhinged rage. Mm -hmm. Any man that can touch Sidene essentially goes mad now. Mm -hmm. And this changes the entire landscape of the world. Mm -hmm. We're not just talking about explosions and buildings blowing up and fire We are talking about mountains rising from the sea. Mm -hmm. We are talking about displacing entire nations. People were lost, and this is pretty much humanity on the brink of extinction. Mm -hmm. This is just now humanity going back into its infancy and starting over. This ends the time period called the Age of Legends, Mm -hmm. which was a time of extreme scientific discovery and Mm -hmm. advancement. Mm -hmm. Now we're back to basically the Dark Ages. Mm -hmm. So civilization has essentially disappeared, and the remaining last few men who can touch Mm Sidene are found and gentled. Mm -hmm. Now if you're watching the TV show, this is what happened at the very beginning of episode one. You Mm -hmm. see a red Aja sister gentling a man who is talking to another man who Mm -hmm. isn't really there yes he's gone mad he's gone mad Mm -hmm. this brown aja sister that's teaching these young novices in white says knowledge has been lost and when you think of just our modern day society how much knowledge that we have on computers and universities and books If you think about what would happen to our civilization, if it all is gone, Mm -hmm. what happens? Mm -hmm. This becomes the sacred duty of Aes Sedai to keep the world from having another breaking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And something that I think is interesting is that in this context of this short bonus clip that we've gotten, it says it's the sacred duty of an Aes Sedai. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that means all Aes Sedai or Mm. if it means the Red Aja, because essentially the Red Aja is the Aja that's tasked with men who have gone mad. But they kind of leave this like up in the air. Mm -hmm. So we don't know exactly how things are going to play out on the show. Mm -hmm. This is just what they've told us (laughs) through this short clip. (laughs) That essentially kind of wraps it up. I think... The very ending of this short clip, just with this sprawling library, which I would assume is the library in Mm Tarvalin in the White Tower, which Mm -hmm. is notorious for being the biggest, the best, the most wonderful library in this world. Mm -hmm. And I love that we are given this clip from the eyes of the Aes Sedai. Mm-hmm. So, and it's not just that they're saying, like, this is what happened. They're teaching it to the young new initiates in white that would have just entered the tower. Yes. So yeah. it's really cool. It comes at a very impressionable moment for them. Right. Like, what was it like before the breaking? Like, mm-hmm. she's telling them this is how this is what happened during the breaking, but there's not really a mention of what it was like to beforehand. Mm -hmm. And this is the age of legends. Mm -hmm. So when they're saying all knowledge was lost, they're not talking about like just being in medieval times. We're Mm -hmm. talking about extreme advancement. We're Mm -hmm. talking about people that could do incredible things with technology. Yes. Yeah. The one power was used almost supplementally to 
what was done through technology and scientific advancement, including healing. And I think, I think that that's really interesting that we now have a world 3,000 years later that mm -hmm. has an entirely different relationship with the one power than what happened during the Age of Legends. And you're, you're right. Like, this is a civilization that's been rebuilding itself. Their past was advanced. Yes. Their current time is... Not. Nothing yeah. compared to it. No, no cars of any kind. Like, the only forms of, like, transportation at this point are very rudimentary. Horses. Yeah, yeah. Ships. Or walking. <laughs> Boats. Ships. A carriage, if you're lucky. Um, or not. They just don't sound that great, truthfully. It's also during this time of legends, before the breaking, that the constructs were created. Mm, good so point. So think of, like, a never-ending supply of food. Like, they genetically created creatures that would just create food yes so well and also they controlled the weather right didn't they like make sure that like the weather was kind of always what they wanted it to be when they if it wasn't it to be? if it wasn't exactly controlling the weather it was like creating a microclimate yes kind of. so just kind of like <laughs> making sure that there was always food production. So mm -hmm. when you're thinking about it, like people weren't going hungry. Mm -mm. People were very well taken care of. That's not to say everything was perfect because there are clues in there where people say it's a possibility that this perfect time, perfect time might not have lasted. Yeah, we definitely and of course, like it gets cut short by the breaking of the world. Yeah. By everything going to topsy turvy. Shit? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I really, really, really like that they created this as a novice classroom. Like, it's another one too. of those. Yes. Yes. I do, too. But mm -hmm. I, I have to wonder, is it possible that they left out a few things mm. due to their own involvement? If that makes sense. Yes. Like if it's self-edited? Yes. Yes. Who yes. writes the history books, Tracy? Tell um, me. The victors? <laughs> the wealthy? The people who can? Yeah. Yeah. And when we're thinking of all these things, the White Tower stands as the highest monument of civilization currently in this world yep they are on top of the world basically and mm -hmm. their giant tower kind of signifies this yeah 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 <laughs> in fact like the the main self-editing that i can think of that really kind of caught me off guard in this short is mm -hmm. when they're talking about the imprisonment of the dark one and the Aes Sedai said that Luce Theron took um, the forces of the light with him. Yes, yes. She does not mention that they were... Who, the, who they were. Yeah. So she doesn't mention that they are all male, that mm -hmm. they're Luce Theron's companions. So the Aes Sedai were not having it with this plan from Luce mm -hmm. Theron. And so they told him... You go we're do not going to help. Yeah, we're not going to help. If you feel like this is what you want to do, go do it. And whatever happens, happens. And when I was going through this yesterday, I was wondering, one, I mean, mostly, what would have happened had the women said yes? Would they have had a more successful cage for the dark one created would the dark or one... would there be a taint on Sidar, the female half? Yeah, or on there's both two halves. School... Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's two schools of thought here. Yeah. If the women and men would have worked together, mm -hmm. the dark one would have been imprisoned and everything would have gone off without a hitch. Yeah. Or Sidine and Sidar are then tainted by the dark one. And everyone that can channel goes mad. 
Mm-hmm. So we don't know. It's yeah, it's a we big what if. But it, yeah, you saying like perhaps they're telling it from their point of view. She doesn't mention in that novice lesson that the female Aes Sedai had no part of this. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, you could definitely spin that in a favorable light, but leaving it out entirely questionable. Yeah, yeah, it feels a bit duplicitous another question that i wanted to ask just because people mm. might not have a clue mm-hmm. who is this Luz theron guy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he was the strongest channeler in the world Luz theron was the head of pretty much all the Aes Sedai at this time male and female i think one of the biggest things that you want to think about during the breaking of the world is not only just nations and civilizations dying out, that the actual landscape of the world changes. Mm -hmm. You can see in the clip, Mm -hmm. there is an image of the woman who's leading this class, holding her hands over the map, and the map crumbling and breaking. Mm -hmm. And I think this was a really nice representation to kind of like show people the world, the landscape itself changed. Yeah, yeah, We had yeah. giant mountains, like, shooting up. We had entire nations going under the sea. It mm-hmm. was just chaos. Carnage. Yeah. <laughs> a lot <laughs> of it. A lot of it. When I saw the creation of Dragon Mount in my mind, it was not nearly as cool as what that was. So I really... And I really like the image of Dragon Mount that they've created. Um... In like in this slide, if you watch it in the short, it's always like spewing out smoke and sparks love, in a way. Yeah, I love the composition of how no matter how how high up Tarvalin can place themselves in this tower, they are still in the shadow of Dragon, of Mount. Dragon Mount. They are still in the shadow of Luz Theron. Wow. I feel like maybe the White Tower at one point, not saying always, mm-hmm. had a little bit of a chip on their shoulder when it comes to Luz Theron. Mm-hmm. But these were two kind of opposing sides, and the White Tower itself was formed after the breaking of the world, I believe. Yes. yes. Why would they do that? Just randomly thinking, why as female, a reminder maybe to always be in the shadow of Dragon Mount? Well, I saw it as a confrontation to it. Like, we will oh. put ourselves, we will build a structure and trying to, like, live up to it in a way. Like, Statement of they defiance. made it tall for a reason. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Listeners, what do you think? Yeah, I <laughs> What I, is in the psyche of it all? What does it mean? <laughs> that's what I always want to know. <laughs> I think something that is also worth mentioning in this clip is how young novices can be. Yes. Um, In the books, it's usually, is it as young as 13? I believe so. Yeah, like young, impressionable minds for these Aes Sedai to mold. We're not here to say that all the Aes Sedai were, like, Mm self-editing themselves Mm -hmm. in the history because there are good people in every organization, institution, and there are also bad. Mm -hmm. Throughout the history of the White Tower, you have had Amerlins who are very great forces against evil, against the shadow. And there were also that did very horrible, terrible things. And you will learn about that next week when we cover the next bonus episode. It's something a Nethrin, that, right? Yeah, something very small that kind of gets left out of this Manetheran mm-hmm. bonus content. But if you like this type of stuff, if you like the lore, if you're interested in more of it we're gonna try and keep doing some of these videos Mm -hmm. they might be kind of staggered throughout our regular content 
But Which is if why you, you should subscribe. Yeah, if you subscribe. would like to listen, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you would like to see more of this, like the video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One thing that I think that it can kind of be expanded upon is it wasn't just Luce Theron and his mm -hmm. 100 companions that went mad. There were groups of men everywhere that slowly started going mad as well. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them tried to take refuge in some places. Mm -hmm. And as this happened, mm. some of them are hunted, some of them are hidden, mm -hmm. and it takes a while before they are all found. Yeah. So they open this summary, or they open this little thing with a quote from the Prophecies of the Dragon, and those are dropped throughout the books. We're, we're going to self-edit this prophecy just a little bit to make the mystery stand for, for non-book readers. Thank you. That's perfect. <laughs> okay. Would you like to read it, Tracy? <laughs> I would. <laughs> Yet one shall be born to face the shadow, born once more as they were born before, and shall be born again, time without end. The dragon shall be reborn, and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth at their rebirth. In sackcloth and ashes shall they clothe the people, and they shall break the world again by their coming tearing apart all ties that bind like the unfettered dawn shall they blind us and burn us yet shall the dragon reborn confront the shadow at the last battle and their blood shall give us the light let tears flow O you people of the world weep for your salvation <laughs> i know right like i just feel like that one is so powerful it sums up so much what these people have to fear but what they also have to potentially gain this is the battle that brought about the breaking of the world was the dark one was free they needed to push him and his forces back and in the process of it counterstroke from the dark one to sidine causes madness it, it's almost it's almost worth wondering would it have been better to let the Dark One win? Would he have caused the same As level much. of destruction that was brought about by the breaking of the world? He would probably take away people's free will, mm -hmm. I feel like. But this is another thing, too, about Luz Theron that they don't really touch on too much in this bonus episode. Mm-hmm rebirth is a thing so in this world you can be reborn mm -hmm. as someone else mm -hmm. it's shown up multiple times in the episodes mm -hmm. that's why people are afraid of being the dragon reborn because this man loose theron the one who went mad and destroyed everything mm -hmm. will be reborn into the body of one of these young five persons that mm -hmm. Moraine is searching for. Yeah. Scary. Like scary. I, I wouldn't want to be that person. And they've yeah. all been they've all been brought up on stories about how the bad fear, the destruction. Yes. Yep, exactly. And I mean of course once you go to some place like Tarvalon, the knowledge of it goes past just like storytelling and into actual mm -hmm archives if you will where you can read translations of the prophecies of the dragon but it doesn't stop like pretty much everyone from knowing that the dragon is to be feared but i think that wraps it up i don't really have anything else to add i want to keep it as short as possible yeah yeah hopefully we're under an hour i have no idea me neither i'm kind of afraid to look <laughs> 54 minutes